Hi, our segment today is about learning in a rhizome. Our conversations today are very much inspired by two French philosophers, Gilles Deleuze and Felix Guattari, who wrote A Thousand Plateaus. It talked about many things, citing how we traditionally build structures to frame our thoughts. These two gentlemen argued a rhizomatic map of perceiving things. According to Guattari de Luz, the rhizome has no hierarchy and no tree-like or root-like structures and every node can connect to any other node in unpredicted and unpredictable ways. Echoing the words of Professor Dr. Andrew Lyon, a rhizome refers to the ways in which learners traverse networks of representations of knowledge as they go about their learning and that a rhizomatic structure should not be thought of as a chaotic but rather as a self-regulating structure responsive to the learner's needs as determined by the mechanisms in place. This is my view of rhizomatic learning. Rhizomatic learning is an organic developed system of habits, attitudes, and personal practices of discovery, meaning making and validation of what we perceive as knowledge. Not everyone perceives in this manner right away. Not everyone is ideally self-regulated. Hence, it is important to learn how rhizomatic learning takes place. Imagine two nodes and a line that connects the nodes. This is the representation of a learning incident. Such incident may be short or may be long in length. Such incident may be rich or may be light. Anywhere along this line is a point of entry of related or supporting information or knowledge. But the deciding point of pushing the learning incident forward happens or takes place at the node. The node represents the stop point or I would prefer to call it as a stopping point. It is a reflection time. It is the time when a person re retrospects on what she is doing or thinking or what she has done. It is a combination of the past and the present. It is a point when she has to decide whether to go further or not. It is also a point when she decides to resolve her issues independently or not. It is a point that could also be anywhere along the line in between nodes. As the person engages in a learning incident, she also decides whether to accept or reject what she has acquired along the way. So when she reaches the perceived stopping point, if the reflection is accompanied by personal gratification, the new line from the stop point becomes richer and of greater motivation. It is also a point when a person decides to move back and rethink what she has accomplished or what she has done. It is also a management and collaborative time when a person decides to go farther and realizing she is in need of support, she pulls different resources, different information. At the same time, she moves to seek help from individuals and entities she is connected to. Or she can also seek the help of the experts. And this is very important. It can also be a representation of an interaction time. So in this instance, the stopping point may have many intersecting lines of different length and thickness. The stop point is a representation of interaction or an interfacing activity. The more dynamic the line and where there are many intersecting richer lines to it, the more complex the learning interactions of the person. The interaction is a representation of the kind of engagement or performance 
the learner encounters in the learning episode. So we are now looking at the stopping point as a representation of one, reflection time, two, management and collaborative time, three, interaction time, and fourth, it could also be a representation of a panel time. Panel represents the point when a learner simply permits everything to flow in and out of her. Listening, observing, watching, and just sensing. This can be great, a great moment too for a learner into rhizomatic learning. She becomes a sponge, a receiver of everything. Afterwards, she decides to sponge off whatever she perceives as something not meeting her present learning needs. So for a person to develop rhizomatic learning skills, she needs to know herself. How does she learn? How does she feel towards these stopping points? What does she consider as her best stop point? Being a panel, being reflective, interacting, or managing, or collaborating. Ideally, she learns all these stop point activities, acquire confidence in them, and apply them for a more rewarding rhizomatic learning experience.